Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's video we're going to go over top view swimming. In previous video I went over side view swimming. If that's more what you're wanting there'll be a link up top. But yeah, let's get started. Alright, so just like side view swimming and side view ladder climbing mechanics, I'll be utilizing area detection as the way to determine when the player is swimming. So I want to briefly go over area detection. I feel like I never cover it completely. So let's go over area detection. Uh, first things first, we'll start with how do you set area detection. And that is in the tiles tab and you can click on one of your tile sets and click on a tile. For this case I'm going to be using water as we can see. This is the tiles I'll be using. So you can actually click on one or you can click on multiple of them. And then you can come over here and you can see an assign number to objects area detection variable. So if you click on this and you assign it a number, in this case I'm using 5, that means that this tile's area detection is now 5. So now we need to set how to detect. And by default, it's on this option, when object touches tile wall detection. Well, that requires tile wall uh, detection, which means that you can't pass through. So instead of detecting when it touches a tile wall detection, we actually just want to use it for when an object overlaps the tile. And that way we can have no wall detection and still have uh, the area detection be recognized. And then you can say target groups, we could take off the enemy for instance and only have the player group swim and so on and so on. You can also give it a specific tile group and to further uh, make different con conditions. So that's how you set area detection uh, in the tile set. Uh, one uh, tip, I guess, is you could also have a area detection tile sheet, which you can have the number visibly available. And you'll see that I have this five tile and I have assigned it to five and gave it the same settings as the water did. And so now technically I could come to this water group and I could not assign it anything. And in my scenes, you'll see that I have an area detection layer that is the far most right, meaning that it's the lowest and will not be shown. And then I put the area detection underneath the water. And that way, if I'm ever confused about where the area detection is, I could just click on my area detection layer and see exactly what I have, uh, where my area detections are. That's one way to do it. It's not required at all, so I will go ahead and give them back. And I guess while we are on this topic, area detection detects through layers. So even though my player is on the player layer, area detection, it will still sense when the object is over area detection. So yeah, it detects between layers, which is kind of nice because you could have a system like this. All right, so now that we've gone over how to establish an area detection, let's go over how to actually have the player register on that area detection. Remember this setting right here, when object overlaps tile. So what exactly does overlap tile mean? How do you do that? Well, that is done in the animations actually. So when you're setting up your animations on the frame, you have to click on frame, you'll see a this little red dot here. And this is known as the center. So over here on display related, you'll see center. It has an X and a Y position. You can adjust it as you need. Now you have to do this per each frame. So if you want to do multiple, you can click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one, and you can now adjust all the frames and they will all adjust accordingly. So it, it while you do have to set it up for each frame, it's not as hard as it sounds. So let's talk about this center. This is what is going to tell the object what area detection it's in. So as soon as this little pixel enters a tile, and remember it's only one pixel big, so as soon as it enters, that's when it, it will start registering the area detection. So you have to be pretty accurate in how you place this. You'll notice that I place this on the lower feet. And remember, you can change them per frame and per direction. So you'll notice that in my idle and my move, I have it relatively low where the feet are. But when I'm swimming, when I'm moving in my swim, I have it 
uh, place a little different. For instance, I need it to detect a little higher when you're moving up. When you're moving down, I can still do it at the low point. When I'm moving right, I made it more um, where her sprite is and moving left, similar thing. So you can move the center around and get um, good results. However, sometimes you have to be careful because if you have a center that is to the left a little bit here, and then you have a idol that is dead center, you could be flipping back and forth really quick. <laughs> so you so you, there are some things to consider when doing this. And I've set up the swimming in a way to where you avoid all that. Okay, so now that we know what is actually detecting the area detection, let's go into our object. And with my top view swim selected, I'm going to go into the variable management, and I'm going to show you this is the area detection variable. It's a pre-made variable. It comes with a default value and only changes when that center in the animations tab overlaps a tile with area detection. So as soon as you overlap, this variable will change to 5 which this is how you're going to be doing your checks. You're going to be running a variable check if you are in that area detection. Now, a quick tip here, you'll see, let's say that you have this all over the place and you want to go to a specific one. You can see where exactly you set it up. I set it up in the swim setup and the swim exit. That's where I have these checks. You can click on one and right click and say move and it will move you to that link where you're running that check. So pretty cool tidbit. So now let's get into how I set this up. I have a normal idle and move loop, very simple. If you do have other actions, you'll have to have links also going to swim setup as you need. So just keep that in mind. But what is happening is that in the link from move to swim setup, we are checking if the area detection is equal to five. As soon as the area detection is equal to 5, we go to a swim setup. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky, especially since I was talking to you about how if your centers are in different spots, it can cause some real quick flipping between the animations. And we need to avoid that, but we also want it to be as accurate as we can. We don't want the player to look like it's in water when it's out of water and stuff like that. We can see this. Uh, really good with link to the past. I have this gif here and you can see that when he enters water from a jump he jumps a ways off and we can see that when he enters water from a portion he moves. I just I barely entered the water and he moved up. That's how far he moves up and you can see that he looks like he should be technically swimming so they didn't move down when he exits the water. So I wanted to avoid some of those things and how link to the past sets up the entrance to the swimming is how I ended up utilizing the swim setup in this. So what happens is, is I change to a swim move animation, which I had already set up and I'm taking control of the player. So whatever direction it was in, I, I stop it in that direction. I say you can't move anymore by these options over here. And then I also changed the speed a little bit because I want it to be fast. I felt like Link's entrance into the water was really slow. And when I play, sometimes I'm like, oh, come on. But then the next thing that you do is you move towards the display direction. So now that we have the direction locked, we now move towards the display direction. Just about 10 pixels. That's all it takes. Now the center is out of the way. It's it's fully in the area detection. There, there'll be no more flipping back and forth. And it kind of gives a nice entrance into the water. We can see that by play testing. I'll just quickly run to the water. And you can see that it just forced me in there about 10 pixels. Now, if you wanted it to be slower, you can. You would just adjust the speed accordingly and get your desired uh, move. And the link to the swimming loop is after a certain amount of time passes and again I just wanted it to be real quick and then you have your swimming loop where you have a swim idle and a swim move so if we see this this is just like a walking idle loop except for it's in the swimming so I'm idle I'm swimming I'm idle I'm swimming 
I don't know if I chose the right idle <laughs> for down, but it works. And so now we need to exit. And that's very simple. The exit is triggered when the area detection is not equal to five. And you can actually do this a couple ways. You can say not equal to, or you could say equal to, and then you can click this gray button and that means not equal to, or it's actually checking for the opposite value. But sometimes that is hard to read and it's a light gray. Sometimes it's hard to see. So it's probably best just to stick with the actual operator that you're wanting. And then this leads to the swim exit, which is it's doing the same thing that the swim setup's doing. It's taking control away from the player. It's locking them in the direction that they last were. And then it's moving them 10 pixels out of the water as well as changing the motion. And then after a quick certain amount of time passes, it then goes back to the idle state, which this is the shortcut for it. So if we play test, we see this full loop, we can go in and then we can swim and then we can exit out. And it looks and feels pretty good. You can go pretty pretty fast and it keeps up with, with uh, a natural swimming look. Uh, one thing real quick is that in the move, I did lower the swimming movement. I feel like that's reasonable for swimming, swimming a little slower and stuff like that. So I hope that this made sense and that it's helpful. This can be applied to more than just swimming. You could do poison areas, you know, poison puddles that you need to avoid or and stuff like that, utilizing area detection very useful tool we have here. If you have any cool ways that you've used it, please drop them in the comments below and I'll see you at the next video.